On this episode of UTR, we're back in our less populated peninsula with five more reasons why you need to be in the UP. We'll eat some muffin fries, I'll explain later, roam around an awesome inn and cook our own steaks. Then we'll get you into kombucha and even do some copper country curling. Get ready to explore the cool people, places, and things that make Michigan's Upper Peninsula perfect. 14 clubs. That's what they tell us a legal golf bag can hold. And while that leaves a little room for balls and tees, it doesn't leave room for much else. There's no room left for deadlines or conference calls. Not a single pocket to hold the stress of the day or the to-do list of tomorrow. Only 14 clubs. Pick out the right one and drive it right down the middle of Pure Michigan. Your golf trip begins at Michigan.org. A visit to the Stalls Auto Collection will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. A fantastic assortment of gas pumps, neon signs, and automated music machines dating back 150 years that must be seen and heard. Info at StallsAuto.com. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar, Michigan. Well, here we go again. The fellers and I went up and over the mighty Mackinac Bridge and deep into the UP to bring you more cool stuff to see and do. But no need to thank us. <laughs> it's kind of what we do. Oh, look, rocky outcroppings. It's completely different. That's right, Eric. We're still saying it. That's right. Even in the dead of winter, Michigan's UP is alive with all kinds of fun and fascinating places to eat, stay, and play. Sure, a lot of the features are frozen this time of year, but the warm hearts of the inhabitants will have you wanting to explore more. For well over a decade now, UTR has been discovering the UP's great cities, incredible natural sites, and its endless variety of awesome eateries. And we don't plan on stopping anytime soon. So pull up your mucklucks, don your stormy cromer, and grab your choppers. Because here comes the UP, UTR style. Now, the first part of our UP adventure took us about 45 minutes west on US-2 along the shores of Lake Michigan to the tiny town of Nauvin Way. Now, if you're in the UP and you're driving down the road and you see a sign that says Moofin Fries and you have no idea what it means, don't worry about it. Just hope that you're hungry because you're about to have some tasty surf and turf of the casual kind. Now, we're all faced with challenges in life, some greater than others. Well, Wayne Flatt was a welder who stopped to help a fellow motorist on the highway, and his life was changed forever. But he took on the challenge, changed directions, and created a fantastic feast that foodies are finding from far and wide. But before we sample this establishment's fine bill of fare, time for a one-on-one -on -one with Wayne. Now, Wayne, for anybody at home scratching their heads, because I was at first, too, explain the name Moofin Fries. Yeah. Okay, well, Moof and Fries is its kind of what we do. Right. It's Moo is for the ice cream and the burger. Right. Okay. Yep. Fin is for the fish and then fries. So, Moof and Fries. Well, I got to tell you, the cow and the fish out front on the sign, mm -hmm. they look awful happy for two guys that are featured on the menu. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how did a guy like you, you're, you used to be a welder, right? Yep. How did a guy like you end up owning a burger place? Well, something I kind of always wanted to do. and. So my brother, he's got the beef cows. And so what we did is we got together and we built a restaurant, my wife, my son and I, and all, pretty much all the family members were involved with it. I mean, the community I'm sure has rallied around you tremendously. Yes, yeah, yeah. And then, well, in the summer we hire, we had 16 kids that work in here. I want to teach them how to work. I don't think you realize how important that is to have a place like this in the community where kids can learn the real world, learn right. how to work, how to be future entrepreneurs, how to be responsible. Right. Um, that means a lot to the community. Yeah. Well, it's what the community gave a lot back to me after my accident. Yeah. So, that's what I wanted to do. Well, what does it mean to you to have your family here and to be 
doing what you're doing for them and for the community? Oh, it, it means the world to me. It's, you know, it's everything I want. And I want for nothing in life. So, Actually, I, ha I have everything. I have friends. I have... You're a very rich man. Oh, super rich. Yeah. Yep. Yep, super rich. Yep, we have a family with, with love. You know, so. Well, just like you've come to expect on UTR, it wasn't long before we stopped talking and commenced to chewing. And just like we remembered, the fish was fresh and the beef was bona fide with fries piled high. He even sent over their colossal holy cow burger. Now, whoever said don't eat anything bigger than your head never tried one of these. So next time you're anywhere near Nobbin Way, come chow with some of your new best friends at Moofin Fries. The name may be wonderfully wacky, but hard work and Wayne would have it no other way. So with our hunger tucked safely away, we headed about an hour and a half northwest to a place famous for the incredible Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore on Lake Superior, countless beautiful trails and waterfalls, and an island so grand, that's exactly what they call it. You know, Munising has always been one of my favorite Michigan towns. It's got a great historic walkable downtown, it's smack dab in the middle of paradise, and it's holding onto its past while it's still moving into a really cool future. Tom Delasky is a dedicated and driven dynamic dude who is helping make Munising a first-class destination with all the amenities amenable to modern Magellans like me. You know, like great places to stay and eat, all while you explore this awesome area. Well, one of his latest and greatest is the Rome Inn, a boutique-style hotel that's so cool and creative you could put it anywhere in the world. But lucky for us, he put it right here in Munising. Bonus. Now don't take this wrong, but I love guys like you. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> because you could live anywhere in the world, sure. but you've decided to stay in Munising and help this community evolve and grow all while keeping it, I mean, it still has the charm it's always had, mm -hmm. but you guys, and you figured out a way to improve it and to make this place a destination which is amazing. The Rome Inn, it's a world-class ambiance, atmosphere. What insp what's the inspiration for the interior? You know, it's, it's all, a, it's a local flair, right? Like, like I say, the, the bird's eye maple tables, these trees were cut in Alger County, processed in Alger County, and finished in Alger County. Um, using, using stuff, but then, you know, talking about how, how unique it is, how unique that you can't find tables like this anywhere. You have to make them. You know, the, the lumber and the, the sidewalls was from a friend of mine that cut the trees on his property and then a friend of his ran them through a mill. Um, I don't know, that just sort of spoke to me from an interior design. I, the, the interior design piece is, is one of my favorite things to do. It's my personal touch on all of it. And using as much local talent and local flair as we could we, we had to. We had to do it that way. The rooms here are different. The, <clears throat> there's a there's a good solid mix. I mean, 18 units, uh, family rooms, large lounge rooms. You know, they've got separate living rooms, separate bedrooms, and then a couple that are smaller. But it's a good good mix. We did the most that we could with the amount of space we had. And the restaurant. I mean, it's Tracy's, right? Yeah. Just Tracy's. Yeah. And you've just won some awards. Yeah. So, you know the. The Yelp Award in 2017 was, was unexpected. I remember, I think a friend of mine tagged me in a Facebook post or something. They're like, hey, you know, Tom, did you see this? And you have no clue. And, the, cause it, and that's, that's the cool part about it, is we didn't push out, push out to achieve that. You know, I was surprised to find out we, we were named the, the best new restaurant in Michigan by Yelp voters, which was, it's user-generated validation. You which know? is the best. Yeah, when you're when a collection of customers across the state say that one was the best one, that that was a, an extreme surprise. But you, thanks to you, now it's even more of a destination. I want to come here even more, and now I want to come here and stay here. Is that possible? It is. You can make that happen. Yeah, you I know. know I know a guy. You know a guy who knows know a guy? guy. I know a guy named Tom. Hey, so do I. <laughs> Well, with all that being said, we dined at Tracy's, amazing, 
enjoyed the inn's many amenities, and slept in sumptuous style. Honestly, when you're traveling, where you stay can be a big part of the fun and adventure. And this is a comfortable and creative place that made ours truly special. Next time you're roaming across the UP, stay a few nights at the Rome Inn in Unising. Your Pleasure Center will thank you for it. The next morning we enjoyed a hearty breakfast at Early Birds, then continued our adventure west. And you know us, after about 15 minutes we decided to stop for a light lunch in Christmas, Michigan. Light as in, light up the grill fellers, we're about to have us a mess of savory steaks. Well you guessed it, we're about to pull into Foggy's Steakhouse on M28 where you can select your own steak and sizzle it yourself. Yep. If you're looking to break garlic bread and rub elbows with Jan Youpers, this is the ultimate place to do it. It's casual, comfortable, and full of both the character and characters you'd expect to see in the UP. Real and really friendly. Now to help me barbecue some beef and find out how the name Foggy's came to fruition, I gathered at the grill with Sean and Chad St. Amour. I gotta be honest, fellas, I was a little nervous when I found out we are coming here. Because, I mean, the guys at the shop where I take my car already have my man card. <laughs> you know, when it comes to grilling, my wife's always saying, why don't you go out and grill something? I'm like, look who you're talking to. I mean, I'm, I yeah. suck at grilling. I'm terrible at it. Yeah. But, so, I'm going to rely on you guys. Uh, we'll help you along the way. It is a little intimidating. Uh, some people, like you, like you just said, you're not that comfortable out here. That's where our chef comes in. And well, If you come to Foggy's, you can either have your yeah. steak cooked for you, or yeah. you can do it yourself. Or, yeah, or you can step up and uh, give and it a go. be a man, give, right? Yeah, give it, <laughs> give it a go. <laughs> Try your best, you know. A lot of people like that, you know. They're intrigued by it, and some other people are like, yeah, we're at a restaurant. Let's let, let them do the work. Well, real quick, uh, I've, we've heard about this place for years. Where did the name Foggy's come from? Uh, that was my dad's nickname. Um, he got that back in the late 70s. And when he opened this up in 82, 1982 is when him and my mother uh, opened this, and uh, he's like, I just have to go with it. It was one of those things, like, it was, he's like, I'm gonna run with it. So you got your grills fired up, so yep. you just throw it? Uh, well, it's up to you, depending on how you like to season it. Um, typically, if we were cooking it for you, yep. we would start out with a little uh, of our garlic butter. Please. What, Seasonings. This is just black ground pepper. Oh, I oh, pepper free. Yep. Okay. Garlic powder. Yeah, so and this is uh, just a Montreal steak blend that we do. Where, where on the grill do I put it? So with a steak with that large, you definitely want to go a little bit slower. So I would typically I would start on the edge of the. Yep. Well, again, this place is an institution. But what does it mean to you guys to to, to carry on the family tradition and to be part of the community like this? You know, it means a lot. Oh, definitely. I mean, we we grew up in this place. I mean. We were brought up very young, you know, family business, so uh, it's uh, it's in our blood. So, so you guys get tons of people in here. You get snowmobilers we in do. the summer. You get boaters and hikers and you know. very seasonal. Uh, yeah. yeah, we we see yeah, all of it. Uh, yep. I don't, you can't smell this at home, but if do you guys actually? Does this vent out onto the street? It does. It, <laughs> it probably smells very nice outside. When we fire this up, and uh, you're just outside and anywhere in the vicinity of this building, you can smell steak. Do you get also get like coyotes? And <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. the animals uh, had a couple uh, uh, black bear a time or two around the area. Yep. This is my protein for the day. <laughs> this isn't a protein for the winter. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, in no time at all, I think I actually almost kind of sort of got the hang of it. And thanks to my coaching staff, my medium rare masterpiece was ready for my mouth. Heck, Sean and Chad even joined our little protein party. Mmm, steak. So, if you're looking to be an active participant in the preparation of your next meal, be your own grill master at Foggy's Steakhouse. Or if you're just looking for a comfortable place to take the family, watch a game, hear some live music, or just hang out with some friendly youpers, Foggy's will get you there too. Well, speaking of driving, it's time for us to move on. So, Jim, mush. What? Next, we drove about 45 minutes due west to one of UTR's favorite towns, Marquette, home of Northern Michigan University, a cool historic walkable downtown, 
and a beautiful natural harbor right on the shores of Lake Superior. It's also home to a creative young guy who's delving into the microcosmos to make beverages that are as much fun to drink as they are good for you. That's right, at Superior Culture, Alex Rowland brews the ancient and mysterious elixir known as kombucha. And you're about to find out why you need to find out about it. Or something like that. Okay, Alex, for people who aren't as enlightened and hip as we are, well, let me reword that. For people who aren't as enlightened, as hip as you are, it, tell, tell me what kombucha really is. Because yeah. I, I say kombucha to people and they're like, what? So what is it? So kombucha is a fermented tea. So basically what we're starting with is a base of tea and sugar. Yeah. Then we're adding that to a live culture of bacteria and yeast. Uh, you have yeast turning sugars into alcohol, while at the same time, uh, bacteria turning a uh, alcohols into acids. So what you're left with is something that's minimally alcoholic, relatively acidic, kind of sour, uh, full of living bacteria, so probiotic, good for the gut. The kombucha is actually, it's centuries old, right? It is. Uh, the origins are somewhat mysterious, but uh, probably goes back to uh, Asian times of some tea sitting on a windowsill somewhere. That went bad, and they drank it and said, hey, my so, gut feels better. Yeah, maybe, maybe this is kind of good. Yeah, because there's, I mean, a lot of people misunderstand bacteria in general. There's bacteria that's really good for you and that's necessary for a healthy, for healthy innards, correct? Correct. And that's what kombucha has? And that's what we're trying to promote. Okay. So you can get it from yogurt, you can get it from fermented uh, foods like sauerkraut and kimchi. Uh, you can also get it from beverages, and that's what the majority of what we make is. A lot of people say kombucha, and if they even know what it is, they'll say, isn't that that vinegar water? But the flavors that you came up with are pretty cool. I mean, what am, what am I drinking here? What is this? That's the orange juniper. So we're in the midst of citrus season, so we like to do a lot of stuff with oranges, tangerines. This is awesome. Grapefruit. It's not, it's not too sweet. It's real fruit flavor. It's got a little bit of fizz to it. This is, I'm trying not to burp on camera, but this is really, really good. And it's the space you've created here is very cool. Um, it's someplace people can come see live music, um, hang out. Uh, you got a roaring fire on the TV over there. <laughs> I love that. But yeah, I mean, this is, it's, it's, it's unusual and yet it's comfortable. It's like, like I, was, I was meant to be here. How long have you had this place? So we've been, uh, been running the business since 2016, roughly started selling in 17, but we've been in this building since May of 2017. Um, and we opened the tap room in fall of 2018. I had high aspirations of opening right off the get-go when I moved in here in May of 17, but didn't realize the lengthy process that it would take to actually get a retail storefront open. Well, for people who haven't tried, if you haven't tried kombucha, am I saying it right? Oh yeah, nailing it. See, sometimes I do things right. Anyway, if you haven't tried it yet, yeah, I mean, you say to some people they make a face or they don't know what it is or they never had it before, this is really good stuff. And like you said, if it's good for you, bonus. Well, we came, we and our beverages chilled, and we discovered why kombucha is a healthy way to have fun while still hydrating. And Superior Culture is the kind of place that'll make you cooler just by inhabiting it. So come taste Alex's next new concoction. And while you're at it, meander Marquette for a day or three. It's one of the greatest places in the UP you can be. Well, it was time to work off some of the copious calories we'd been accumulating during this UP adventure, so we forged our way about two hours northwestward and up the Keweenaw Peninsula to the historic town of Calumet. It's here where we discovered that even though the stones are slid, they say they're thrown. Wait, what? That's right. This is the home of the Copper Country Curling Club, where folks come for fun, recreation, healthy competition, and to celebrate this slippery 16th century Scottish sport. And to make sure I left no stone, as they say, unthrown, I checked in with club president Gary Lassila. I feel historic just standing in this building. I mean, well, how old is the club to begin with? And then how old is and what's the history of this building? So the club began in the winter of 1993. Okay. We moved into this building. This will be our 17th year in this building. Wow. So this building locally, if, if you know anything about the copper country, yeah. um, it was developed due to copper mining back right. in the 1800s. This, our understanding is this building was built in 1885. Wow. And it was built by the CNH Mining Company, Kelly Hecla, 
to build up, to manufacture drill bits. So it's, it was lo known locally as the drill shop forever, and we right. still call it the drill shop because right. they made drill bits in this building. Well, what's amazing, what you guys at home can't feel right now is it's zero degrees in here. And, and th I, mean, th I mean, most curling places, clubs, they have refrigerated, but this is natural right. ice. It's so cold here, this is natural ice, right? It's all natural. Most clubs are heated to some degree yeah. because they have refrigeration underneath. We don't have any heat. Yeah. So we don't need any refrigeration. So it is actually 16 degrees in here right now, not zero. Well, it's zero outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's zero, it is zero outside, you are correct. How heavy are the stones? 44 pounds. 44 pounds, and they're, they're, are they made of space age polymer? What are they made out of? They're made of a certain type of granite, and there's only two quarries in the world where all the curling stones come out of. Okay, and you throw them, even though you're sliding, and you call it your throwing stone. We call stone. it a throw delivery. We just, you, you push them. You throw push the stone. Down the ice. Okay. Yes. Yeah, because this sport goes back to Scotland, I mean, centuries. It's over 400 years old. So if you look at sports, it's up there with like golf and like, not as old as running, but right. it's, it's way older than many modern sports. You want to show me uh, how, to, how you do it up here? Okay, sure. Okay, left foot, right hand, stone. So I'll kind of get you. So okay. there, there's like three steps. So this is the starting yeah. position. Step one, you just slide the rock forward. Step two, you draw the rock back and lift up your hips. And this foot comes back. When do I put my left foot out, then my right foot? So rock forward, rock back. When you bring the rock back, then lift up your hips a little bit, and then you drive out. Okay. Sounds like my If it makes it all the way down there, I'll it be able to- It will make it all the way down. It will? Yes, it will. That's pretty straight and true. In fact, it's gonna hit the back wall. No, it's not. Yes, it will. No, I don't have the strength. It's listen. gonna hit the back wall. Darn listen. it! Listen. Ah, woohoo, I win! I won! I got all the way to the end. Do I get something for that? For that? Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, so that, yeah, that was, wasn't bad. Well, if I can almost do it, anybody can almost do it. Darn it. <laughs> what a blast we had at the Copper Country Curling Club. We made a ton of new friends. I almost learned the game again, and I gained an even deeper appreciation for the sport, this awesome town, and for the outstanding people up here. If you get a chance, come and curl in Calumet. This is where I have to say that if you haven't discovered the Houghton-Hancock area yet, these are two amazing cities you really need to explore. Heck, if you've never been to the Keweenaw Peninsula before, you're missing out on one of Michigan's greatest, most historic, and funnest places to eat, stay, explore, and play. So if you haven't been up to the UP in a while, take a respite from being a low plains flatlander, get up here, and have a blast like we do. Like I always say, it's our own out west, it's our own big sky country, and it's just more Michigan for you to love. Bonus. Okay, Jim, mush. Stop saying that. Sorry. Hey everybody, I'm really excited because we have a brand new web series called Michigan Road Trip Adventures, where you can see cool people, places and things that you can't even see on the TV show. Take a look. I have to tell you guys, I know I'm going to sound like your dad, because I'm old enough to be your dad, but I am so proud of you guys and what you've done with this brand new location. So uh, Canary Toast is a legendary twice-baked uh, piece of bread with cinnamon on it uh, that it has been popular in the UP since uh, the late 20s. Yeah. I mean, there's only seven ingredients in the original cinnamon toast. Um, it lasts a full year, so you have a whole year, there's no preservatives or anything in it. Yeah. But that's what's so special, is young people like you taking these iconic things and carrying them into the future. And that means a lot to old people like me and Dave. <laughs> so, yeah, I, and now you've got a brand new location right downtown yeah. in Marquette. Yeah, I mean, our main goal is to have people engage with the brand. And we want people who don't know what Trinary Toast is and who just walk in off the street to get a coffee or a sandwich to leave knowing what it is and to understand what it means to the UP in terms of the history and the importance of the culture. So if you want to see more cool stuff like that, come join us at utrmichigan.com. That's utrmichigan.com. And pack your bags. 
14 clubs. That's what they tell us a legal golf bag can hold. And while that leaves a little room for balls and tees, it doesn't leave room for much else. There's no room left for deadlines or conference calls, not a single pocket to hold the stress of the day or the to-do list of tomorrow. Only 14 clubs. Pick out the right one and drive it right down the middle of Pure Michigan. Your golf trip begins at michigan.org. A visit to the Stalls Auto Collection will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. A fantastic assortment of gas pumps, neon signs, and automated music machines dating back 150 years that must be seen and heard. Info at stallsauto.com. 